Today we're going to talk about 10 different things that you can do to get the most out of studying your Bible. I completely understand that sometimes it's very hard to understand what's going on in the Bible. I have been saved and a Christian since I was a little girl up until the age that I am now and there are some times where I read a passage and I'm like what in the world is going on right now? What is the historical context? What are they talking about? What am I supposed to get out of this? So today I want to break down 10 different ways that can help you literally understand what you are reading in the Bible and you can get the most out of it. Before we start that video, subscribe, hit like, and turn on that notification bell so that you do not miss any of my future videos. Okay, let's get started. looking down at my phone because I have saved and written down every single thing that I want to share with you guys and I just don't want to be rambling and all over the place so I'm gonna be looking down at my phone so that I can just make sure that I get all the information out in a very efficient way here's number one number one is find a quiet space in a quiet time this is so important and so crucial because if you're like me my mind just travels it wanders i'm thinking about grocery lists i'm thinking about my daughter i'm thinking about cleaning i'm thinking about all different things that i need to get done so the first thing that you need to do is find a time in your day where you can be by yourself find a time where you will have no distractions you don't have to check anything, no emails, no phone calls or anything like that. And you can get along with God and then find a quiet place. For me, back in the day when I was like single, I used to go in my car. I used to drive to the park, in my living room, in the bedroom, sometimes even in the bathroom, anywhere where I could get a few minutes alone and I can have some quiet time. That's what I did. Number two is pray before you even begin. Pray and ask God for understanding. God, I'm about to read X amount of verses in this book of the Bible. Please help me to understand what I am about to read. Please let the words just illuminate off the page. Help me to get something great out of this. Help me to figure out how to apply this to my life and let it bring some kind of change and renewing and refreshing to my life. So pray before you read because praying will also help bring understanding to what you're about to read what you're about to process and what you're about to take in and you're also inviting the holy spirit to come in and minister to you and to show you exactly what he wants to show you for that day in that particular passage because when we read the bible we should be receiving something every single time because god speaks through his word number three is choose a small passage to concentrate on you don't have to do 20 chapters in one day. Choose between five and 10 verses for that day. Listen, it is quality over quantity. I know we wanna read the Bible from the beginning to the end. I know that we wanna say that we read three chapters, four chapters in one day. That's great, and if you can do that, that's wonderful. But for me particularly, I have to read like just a few verses. I feel like that the less that I read and I, the more that I concentrate on those few verses, the more that I retain information, the more that I can understand. Number four is read the passage slowly and take your time. I'm gonna repeat that. Number four is read the passage slowly and take your time. Don't rush through it. Read it slowly so that you can absorb every single thing that is on that page read so that you can understand and and just retain the information that is so important because if we rush through it we're not going to remember we're not going to get anything out of it but the, i realize that the, the times that i read slowly and take my time going through each verse each sentence i am able to retain the information so much easier so read slowly Number five, after you read that passage slowly, you're gonna go back and read it again. That's why once again, I choose five to 10 verses because 
throughout this process, I'm gonna read it about three times. So the second time, I'm gonna go back and read it again, and this time I'm gonna pull out my highlighters. I love highlighters, I love colors, I love office supplies, I love staples, I love office mats, all those beautiful places that have all these wonderful sticky notes and highlighters and pencils and pens and binders and books, I love it all. I have like this set of highlighters, which I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit, these highlighters are the best. They do not bleed, they do not mess up your Bible or anything like that, and I choose a couple of colors. I highlight throughout the verses that I am reading, and I highlight key phrases or key words or sentences that stuck out to me or something that just jumped off the page, and I highlight those things so that I can go back and remember. I use a study Bible, so in the column there, there's enough room for me to write, so the same color that I highlighted is the same color that I'm now going to write with in those margins. Any notes, anything that God showed me, anything that just jumped off the page, I'm going to write in that column so that when I open up my Bible the next time, that immediately is going to jump out at me and I'm going to remember, oh I remember reading that and I remember this is what God showed me. But you know what the awesome thing is, is that I can go back and read it like a month or two later and then find something completely different out of those passages. Number six, once again, once you're done highlighting, then I go back one more time. You might say, okay, this is quite repetitive. Yes, it is. I go back one more time and reread that passage. Once again, that's why I only choose five to 10 because if I choose long chapters and I'm reading books for like a very long time. Number seven is pray. Is there anything that you read, anything that you highlighted, anything that you have written down in your margins that really spoke to you, that you can apply to your heart, that God just showed you, God just ministered to you? This is the time now to pray. What I just read, how can I apply this to my life? How can I make it more real? How can I make it a part of my day? Just continue to speak to me, God. This is the perfect time to just, after you read everything, just pray and bring what you read before God. And God will then speak to you through your prayer time. So number seven is pray. Number eight is worship. After you have read your verses, you have highlighted, you have taken notes down in your margin, you have prayed and you have applied it to your life, now it's time to worship. Now it's time to give God praise for everything that he has shown you. Now it's time to bring your petitions before him. And so I turn on some worship music and I just go to town and worship. We all worship differently. You may walk around in your house, you may walk around in your room, or you may be in your car like I mentioned before and you don't have a lot of space, but make whatever the area you are in at that moment, make it into a place of worship. In the beginning when I was talking about quiet time, that is not the time that I really turn on music like that because my mind just starts to wander. If there is music, it is quiet, it's on a lower level so that I do not get distracted by it because me personally, now I'm starting to wonder who is singing, why do they sound so amazing, who's on the keyboard, how did they do that riff, who just did that ad lib, like my mind is starting to like just completely wander. This is the time that I really turn on the music and now I worship because if I do it in the beginning when I'm trying to find that quiet space, my whole reading is just gonna turn into worship because I'm just a worshiper and I just love music. So now would be the time, number eight, now would be the time to turn on some worship music and get before God and give him your all. Number nine is journal. For me, I have a journal that I absolutely love that my husband gave me as a gift and during that time, you can write down any thoughts that you received from God, anything that he put on your heart, anything that you want to pray about in the future, or you could just journal about what's going on in your day, how you are feeling, um, things that could be bothering you, things that you know that you need to concentrate on. Now will be the time to journal those things so that you, in the future you can then pray for it. And then lastly, number 10, enjoy your day. You've spent this time with Jesus, you've spent this time praying, you've spent this time reading his word and worshiping. Now is the time to go and enjoy your day and watch God continue to speak to you and continue to show you things. Even the things that you even read in those passages, sometimes it just boggles my mind that literally something in the day may have happened that 
I just read earlier this morning or I just read before I went to bed. So go and enjoy your day and just watch God continue to speak to you. Now you may be wondering, okay, that's 10 things. That's a lot. How can I get all 10 things done in one day? Depending on how in depth you go, this could be 30 minutes or this could be an hour. But I would say start off giving yourself about 30 minutes between you and Jesus. 30 minutes just to block off everything of the day and just say, God, for 30 minutes, I'm gonna sit here. 30 minutes, I'm gonna read your word, I'm gonna pray, and I'm going to worship. And as you continue to do that, every day as you continue to make this a pattern or routine of your schedule you're going to notice that 30 minutes is going to turn into 40 to 45 to an hour maybe even 90 minutes you're not going to want to get out of the presence of god because you have built this routine and you've built this rapport and relationship with the holy spirit so start off with 30 minutes it may seem like a lot it may seem way too long but listen 30 minutes. We all have 30 minutes in our day that we could just take and spend time with Jesus. If you take these 10 steps, I promise when you break down five to 10 passages and you read it three times, when you go over it, when you highlight, when you underline, when you take notes and then you journal, I promise you the word of God is gonna jump off the page and you're going to receive something. Quality over quantity. Jesus just wants your time. He just wants you. He's not expecting you to memorize the Bible from cover to cover. He just wants your time and he just wants to speak to you. So make sure you carve out that time. It is so important. Over the past couple of weeks, I have grown so much because I have like implemented these steps and I've just allowed God just to speak to me and to just just to minister to my heart and it just helps my day, it helps me to grow, it helps my thought process, it helps my mind to be clearer. Things that I struggle with in my life or the things that we are struggling with as a family doesn't seem as big or as great because I'm able to give this to God. I'm able to spend time with him and then lay all of this at his feet and at the same time as I am reading his word, he is then able to fill me up and speak to me. So every single time that we open our Bible, every single time that we turn those pages, God's Word should illuminate off those pages and touch our heart. So I really hope that this helped you. I really hope that you were able to get something out of this and that you are able to go deeper in your time with Jesus and studying the Word. And yeah, just let me know if this helped. Let me know if you have any other questions. There is another method that I would like to share with you in a future video. Come back in a week or so and let me know if you've implemented these 10 steps into your routine and how it has helped your relationship with the Lord in your time with Him. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and turn on that notification bell so you do not miss a future video. Okay, bye guys.